All right, so let's talk about the shame triangle model. So this is a framework of understanding ourselves and why certain behaviors exist, and we tend to go towards those certain behaviors more often than others. So if you have a piece of paper or a journal, go ahead and get it out and create an upside down triangle. Make it as big or as little as you want, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna show you a little bit on here how we talk through this model. So in this big triangle, it's important to first start with the part of ourselves that is easily identifiable. And so we have these three parts. We have the shame, we have the rebel, and we have the critic. And a lot of times we start to identify first with the critic or the rebel because these are the behaviors that we are seeing most out there and that we are most concerned with. So for example, the rebel, we're saying, oh gosh, you know, I am drinking too much, eating too much, online shopping too much, lashing out too much, I'm watching too much Netflix. The critic is, I'm really overthinking things, I'm a people pleaser, I'm a perfectionist, I'm really controlling, I am trying to contain and have so much structure around my life that I'm holding on to things so tightly. And the reality is, is that the shame is where we need to start. So down here, we start to identify experiences, lessons, comments from other people, trauma that has really shaped our belief system. And so down here would be things like, um, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy, um, I must do all the time, I'm only worthy if I do, I only get love if I do, uh, I must please people in order to get love. Even going further, I'm a dork, I'm a loser, I am boring, I have no ambition, I'm lazy, I am fat. These ways in which we start to describe ourselves that feels really shameful and icky and embarrassing and we shove it down. So literally like the bottom point of a triangle is shoving down to our deeper core of I want to avoid it, I don't want to see it, it's shameful, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And the critic is really good at keeping that stuff buried because the critic then manages our external representation of ourselves. So if we have the storyline of um, I'm a failure, well, the critic's gonna make sure that we are very ambitious, high achieving, super competitive, a perfectionist. If the shame has a story of um, I am unlovable, well, the critic might be a people pleaser and have no boundaries and always say yes to everything in order to try and get love and validation from other people. So a lot of times we think the critic is who we are. A lot of times we're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just type A or um, you know, I'm just conflict averse. You know, I just am a peacekeeper. And we fail to recognize that this, these behaviors are based off of a belief system that's built around shame and trauma. And the thing is, is that the critic up here, the one that's containing and controlling and manipulating and making sure that we're always appearing as if, well, that's exhausting because it's essentially inauthentic and it's driven by fear. So eventually we crack because the pressure of maintaining this is too much. And that's where the rebel comes in. And the rebel's like, I can't sustain this anymore. This is too much. And whether it's cautious or not, the rebel eventually gets triggered, where then the rebel is lashing out and has some sort of maybe maladaptive coping mechanisms. Maybe that's when you see some of the binging type of behavior. Self-harm comes in this way kind of unhealthy coping mechanisms. But what the rebel is helpful at is that at least it's alleviating the pressure because the critic is gonna burst at some point. And so when we start to see some rebel behavior, it's actually helpful because it says, okay, you identify that this is unsustainable. 
you're seeing a crack in the system, that this actually isn't helpful for you. Now, we have to try and catch the rebel before it becomes super destructive. But when someone presents themselves with some rebel types behaviors, it's like, okay, all right, here's something to work with. Because so, there's some type of awareness here that this can't sustain itself. Now, the problem furthermore though, is that the rebel behavior is usually shameful. It triggers some sort of shame story down here of, again, I'm not enough, I'm unlovable, I'm not doing, I'm not worthy, I'm lazy, fat, unproductive, uh, any one of those belief systems, okay? There's a myriad, we could go on and on about that. And so then we justify and go back up to here. Oh, uh oh, you know, I can't let that happen again, don't let that show. And so it's this relationship and this tug and pull that seems to be constantly occurring. And the key here is to build awareness of these parts, which means we gotta do some digging, we gotta do some trauma work. Uh, we have to really look objectively at our behaviors and see is this working for me or is this based on a story? Is this based on fear? We have to recognize our maladaptive coping mechanisms and we have to work on ways to find healthier coping mechanisms, but we're never going to do that until we address <laughs> this relationship and then eventually provide enough clarity in which we can fall into the center of the triangle. And the center of the triangle is really us, who we are authentically. It's the part of us when we clear out the clutter, we have clarity and we're acting in ways that are connected to who we really wanna be, our value systems. We're confident, we're courageous, we're compassionate, we're connected, we're creative, we're in the flow and we're not continually operating and making decisions out of that shame triangle. So this is beautiful work that Typically, we introduce to a client and then we keep doing all the time and we constantly refer back to because it's a method of self-awareness and really true change and transformation can only come from self-awareness. So that's a little bit of the shame triangle. Thanks for listening.